This video is brought to you by Squarespace. When it comes to websites, online stores, etc., there's no place to build a beautiful online presence like Squarespace. I have been talking about a lot of actors recently. I've been talking about actors who do a lot of good, actors who do a lot of bad. Oh, Harry Potter. Dude. Harry Potter. And now I want to talk about someone who does a lot more good than people realize. That person is Adam Sandler. I haven't gotten the chance to see it yet, but he's got a new movie coming out and it's called Uncut Gems and it's directed by the same people that made Good Time and apparently it's one of the craziest, most anxiety inducing things out there and I'm pumped. But a huge part of it apparently is that Adam Sandler does an amazing job, which doesn't surprise me and seems to be a good time for me to make a video reminding people that Adam Sandler, regardless of what you think of him as a person, can act. I know what you're thinking, Karsten, do you remember Click? Do you remember Pixels? Do you remember like 50 other shit movies this man has been in? Listen man, I don't know what was going through his head either. I'm not saying the man is great at decision making and career choices. I'm saying that when he gets the opportunity, he delivers a specific type of performance that I believe nobody else can deliver. My point is he really is one of a kind. Another thing is I think people put him in a box too much and say he can only play one type of character if he's doing a good job. So to debunk that, I'll be touching on three separate films where I think he does a pretty good job and how he does a pretty good job in three separate ways. What better way to start than with what might be the more controversial take, which is Happy Gilmore. Now, I don't think Happy Gilmore is the greatest thing either. It's, it's Happy Gilmore. It's that one movie that your distant cousin from Ohio really loves. But if I'm being completely honest with myself, I do not think this movie is the worst thing in the world. In fact, I think it is a pretty fun time. My point is that this is Adam Sandler giving a genuinely pretty great comedic performance. Here's how I'll put it. If you were to take his performance out of this movie and put it next to, let's say, his performance in Grown Ups 2, they might feel equally as stupid and pretty similar just because that's how Adam Sandler Sandler works. Which, get this, they are. I'm not going to argue against that. I don't doubt the fact that Sandler is overly dramatic and dumb and obnoxious in this film. What I'm saying is, in the context of this story with these characters, with this tone, it's hilarious. At least to me. You can argue it's not your type of comedy, and I get that, whatever. But I think Sandler knew exactly what he was doing with this role. I think he did a pretty good job in terms of acting. He knew the story and tone, he knew these characters, and there's something about him that really captures the annoying nature of these types of individuals. Individuals. He takes those characteristics, bumps them up a notch, makes it very aware that something like this is meant to be stupid, and as a result you get a pretty enjoyable time in a weirdly charming character. It just seems like one of the few Adam Sandler movies out there where he's actually, what's the word, trying? Take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt because if I'm being honest I haven't seen every Adam Sandler comedy, but this is definitely one of his best. The jokes feel planned out, his delivery makes sense, the whole thing is just a great time. The typical Sandlerisms might not be your favorite thing, but if you want a movie where they work really well, well, this is the one. Another great Adam Sandler movie is The Meyerowitz Stories, a film I watched mostly because I'm going through a Noah Baumbach binge because Marriage Story is one of the best movies of the decade, but moving on. Now this, unlike Happy Gilmore, is a great film for reasons that go past Sandler's performance. This is the first of two dramatic roles that I want to mention, but I think this one is on the opposite side of the spectrum compared to Punch Drunk Love. In this film, Adam tackles a lot of what Baumbach films accomplish, which is capturing an extreme sense of realism. Knowing the way Baumbach writes, if he wants you in his film, you basically basically made it as an actor, that's what I'm trying to say. But I think Sandler went a step further. Not only is he in a Noah Baumbach film, he's one of the best actors in the damn thing. Ben Stiller is great, but you know, he's just Ben Stiller again, although I will say his breakdown in the end is phenomenal. Dustin Hoffman does a pretty great job, etc. But Adam Sandler's performance feels extremely raw and funny at the same time. No matter who the focus is on, Sandler always manages to control the tone of the scene himself. But notice how I didn't say steal the scene. Don't get me wrong, he's very loud in this movie. Hey, shut the fuck up! But like every great Bombat character, Sandler feels real. He feels grounded. It doesn't feel like an actor trying to act. Sandler is simply controlling the scene, making his own performance work, but also allowing for everyone else to do what they need to do. For example, there could be a scene where Ben Stiller may have more lines, but all it takes is a silent performance from Sandler and a reaction shot to drive how we, the people also reacting to Stiller, are supposed to feel in the scene. He understands that the performance doesn't end with line delivery or when you are the only focus. He is always on top of his work. In short, this is a really great movie and everyone should check it out. Lastly, I have to mention what we all knew I was going to mention which is Punch Drunk Love. This is one of my favorite films ever, so there's automatically some praise there. It's PTA's best, the score is like nothing I've heard before, the colors, the theme, the energy, it's all unmatched. But regardless of if you like this film or not, no matter how you feel about it, you cannot deny that without Adam Sandler, it simply would not be the same. I did not want to start with this film because I do think adaptability is a huge part of what makes
makes someone an amazing actor, and Barry from Punch Drunk Love feels like the performance Sandler was born to play. I mean, it's beautiful and insanely lucky that PTA and Sandler were both making movies around the same time and agreed to work on this film together. The result is both artists at their absolute best, in sync with how the energy of the film is supposed to flow. It is like a ballet of a performance. It's like watercolors in human form. The way he'll move from anger to eagerness, all while keeping that underlying feeling of anxiety and depression, I don't know how he did it. The way he delivers lines can simply not be replicated. It's too complex for impressions. The speed changes and his body language feels like it matches a rhythm you'll never latch onto yourself, but that you understand. Unlike the Meyerowitz stories, this performance is surrealism. He's capturing these universal emotions and responses in the body of a person who doesn't exist. It's unpredictable, it's spastic, but more than anything, it's colorful. It feels vibrant and exciting. I'm running out of adjectives. It just feels like Sandler goes places with this character that I haven't seen any actor go before. It felt wrong, but that's because it's new. It's exciting. It's one of the most exhilarating performances to watch, and I don't see a lot of people being able to replicate it. And above all of this, apparently he's unbelievable in Uncut Gems. Apparently, he gives a career best. Do you understand the hype? Adam Sandler may not be a great person, I'm sure he's not perfect, but what I'm saying is, it's time to stop sleeping on his acting skills. Once again, the man has been in some real stinkers, don't get me wrong, but hey, if I delivered a performance like he did in Punch Drunk Love and redefined what it meant to act on film, I'd live comfortably for a while too. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you so much for watching, but before you head out, I wanna give a quick thank you to this week's sponsor, Squarespace. If you're looking to progress your brand and take that next step forward by making a website, I can't think of a better place to do so than with Squarespace. You know, thanks to a wide array of award-winning designer templates, whatever you make, it's going to look sleek, it's gonna look sexy, modern, a bunch of other great adjectives. And if you're intimidated at all because you're like website building, I don't know, that's not my thing, don't worry. They have 24-hour customer service to help you with whatever problems you have. And the coolest part about this all is that if you go to squarespace.com slash Karsten, you can get 10% off of your first purchase. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out Squarespace and I'll see you guys in the next one.